Hello everyone. Welcome to the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm Lee Berger, a paleoanthropologist here at the university and explorer at large for the National Geographic Society. Over the last several weeks as I've delivered lectures from this remarkable hominid fossil vault here at the university, many viewers have written in asking to see more about this space and to learn more about this remarkable vault that holds one of the most significant collections of ancient human relatives, not only in Africa, but in the whole world. And so today, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. I'm gonna show you some of the special features and how this space helps us do science on these remarkable fossils. I'm not going to show you all the features, of course, because many of them are related to the security that protects these precious ancient relics. However, I will give you enough to know that if you ever want to come visit here and do science, that you'll understand how this space operates and its history. So now, let's take a look. The vault is actually called the Philip V. Tobias Fossil Primate and Hominid Laboratory. It's situated in the Evolutionary <laughs> Studies Institute on the main campus of the university here in Johannesburg. It was opened in early 2013 and was designed to replace a much smaller vault at, situated at medical school in Parktown here in Johannesburg. It was named in honor of Philip Tobias, a famous South African paleoanthropologist who not only was involved in the collection of all of these fossil hominids from Sterkfontein, but was also involved in the original descriptions of both Zinjanthropus boisei as well as Homo habilis. The vault is around 100 meters square or about 1,100 square feet. It holds around 3,500 individual hominid fossils, making it one of the largest, if not the largest, repository of fossil human relatives on the planet. We also hold about a thousand casts and comparative specimens of non-hominid primates, including gorillas, chimpanzees, fossil baboons, and monkeys. There are also several hundred non-human primate fossils held here that originate from some of the fossil sites here in South Africa. It was originally designed to hold about 50 years worth of fossil collecting at the rate we were finding hominids back in 2012 and 2013. But later, the same year it opened, we of course discovered the vast collection of Homo naledi fossils from the Dinaledi chamber at Rising Star and we've almost filled this vault. And so, sometime in the near future, we're going to need a bigger vault. Some of the special features of the vault are that it's climate and humidity controlled to protect the fossils from rapid changes in climate. All of the glass is armored and non-reflective to assist us in filming in the laboratory. The cases themselves that hold some of the more important fossils have special opening mechanisms to both protect the fossils and add a level of security. The floor itself is carpeted and deeply padded so that should anything be accidentally dropped, it can resist some levels of damage. All the surfaces of the working spaces are rubberized to also protect the fossils. Of course, the vault is fireproof and has very significant security built throughout. The fossil vault holds fossils from over 15 different localities, including the famous site of Tong, Sterkfontein, of course, which used to be one of the largest assemblages with over 600 specimens, Makapanschat, the rising star cave and over two and a half thousand fossils related to Homo naledi, the Dreamolin site, the site of Swartkrons, Cromdry, and Gladysvale, amongst others. During normal times, the vault receives over 100 international and national scientific visitors, all working on either fossil hominids or the non-hominid fossil primate collections. The vault can be adapted for all types of scientific equipment, including microscopes and more modern surface scanners and 3D scanners. The vault is situated immediately adjacent to a state-of-the-art micro-CT laboratory with a modern micro-CT scanner. The vault is also just down the road from the Charlotte Macheke 
hospital where we have clinical CT scanners and x-ray facilities available. On prominent display are important specimens like the holotype of Australopithecus africanus, the tongue child, the holotype of Australopithecus sediba, as well as the paratype of Australopithecus sediba, the MH2 skeleton. Also, the littlefoot skeleton is on prominent display here. There are also many important pictures and historical artifacts from the early history of paleoanthropology here in South Africa, as well as statue reconstructions from the early days of the search for human origins. There's an excellent and well-resourced library available of many important documents related to the fossils that are held within the vault. Depending on when they were collected and who they were collected by, Fossils are held in different types of cases. Older collections like Sturkfontein and Makapanschat still tend to be in their original wooden trays, and then each individual fossil is held in a small plastic box. More recent discoveries, like those from Rising Star or, or, or Australopithecus sediba, are held in plastic boxes and in individual plastic cases with closing lids and padded material to protect the individual remains. Eventually, all of the collections will be held in one unified way, representing best practice. In the entrance hallway, before you get to our highly secure vault door, there are two breakaway rooms designed for when scientists want to work in a smaller space or with particularly fragile specimens. These two rooms have their own safes and their own equipment for working with specialized equipment. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes look at the fossil hominid vault here at the University of the Witwatersrand. I'll be back over the next several weeks with more lectures and more original fossil hominid demonstrations from right here. For now, I'll sign off from Johannesburg. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Lee R. Berger or on my public Facebook page, Prof. Lee R. Berger. For now, be safe out there. Keep washing those hands.